I'm going to learn about what happens to metals inside nuclear reactors. So, have either of you heard of what atoms are? No? Not heard of atoms? Okay. So atoms are basically like these very small balls that make up everything you see around you. So have you heard of Lego before? Yeah. Yeah, you know Lego? Yeah, so you know of Lego bricks you can make houses and cars and throw houses and toy cars. Well, atoms are the same, except they're much smaller and they make up everything you see around you. So this table is made from atoms, this stamp's made from atoms, even you and me are made from atoms. So they make up everything around you. And inside metals, atoms like to arrange themselves in a very particular way. So the atoms like to get as closely packed together as possible and arrange themselves in a nice, neat pattern like that. Do you see that? So, we're going to look at what happens to these atoms when you place the, a metal, piece of metal inside a nuclear reactor. So, have you guys heard of what a nuclear reactor is before? A nuclear power? Okay, yeah, so it's just a way of generating electricity. We use it to power our homes, power our TVs, and things like that. And inside a nuclear reactor, it's basically a big pot of water that's getting very hot from the nuclear reaction. And the nuclear reaction gives off these things called neutrons. Neutrons are just like little bullets that will just go flying around and crashing into things at very, very high speeds. So this is going to be a demonstration of what happens when one of these neutrons crashes into this structure of atoms here. So. We'll put the neutron in position, take this away. So which one of you wants to go first? I was trying to was up first, I'm afraid, so you get to go. So just come round here. Just pull the plunger back and the release. Perfect. Do you want to have a go? Yes. Same for you, just pull the plunger back. Great, fantastic. So, what do you notice about what's happened to the atoms and what they look like now compared to what they were like before? Yeah, exactly. They've all spread out. So the atoms, you know, they've all spread out. They want to try and get back to each other. They want to try and get into that tightly packed arrangement they were in before. But they can't quite do it. They leave gaps and, uh, and uh, bits missing from the structure. And as more and more neutrons keep firing through and firing through inside this nuclear reactor, the gaps get bigger and bigger and bigger. And you've got these empty spaces forming. So even though the atoms themselves are too small, the effects can be seen in objects in real life. So, can you tell me the difference between the bar on the left and the bar on the right? That one's thinner and it's smaller. Yeah. That one's wider and it's taller. Exactly right. So, what if I told you these two bars were actually identical at one point? They were exactly the same size. But then the one on the right went inside one of these nuclear reactors. The neutrons came passing through, smashing all the atoms up and made these gaps inside of it. And as a result, the whole thing's get, gotten bigger. Isn't that cool? Yeah? So when you're designing nuclear reactors, you have to make sure you understand what happens to these metals. And if they're going to swell up, you don't want gaps forming and things leaking out. So that's why it's very important to understand nuclear material science. So I hope that all made sense to you girls. Yeah.